probably had the experience while you're dreaming. And it can be an awful dream or a dream that's very perplexing or presents you with some challenges. And then suddenly you recognize you're dreaming. You can wake up. You drop the drop all the challenges and perplexity and you're out. It was because you were in the dream that the problem looms so large. Once you're out, you realize it's nothing. That's one of the things that mindfulness can do for you. Mindfulness, of course, being the ability to remember. When you catch yourself in a strange perception, you can remind yourself, I don't have to be there. I don't have to believe this. I can step out of it. Now you're going to have to have a place to step out, which is why we have the breath as our focus. Because the breath is basically a physical phenomenon, but it's very close to the mind. And it's your anchor in the present moment. When you're with the breath, you know you're in the present. When you're with the breath, you can watch the thoughts coming into the mind and not get sucked into them. Unless, of course, you leave the breath, in which case you're going to need mindfulness to remind you to get out if it's a bad place to be. So try to keep the breath as your anchor. Remember, this is your normal place to be. The sensation of the breath coming in and going out, and allow the breath to be normal too. And it takes a while sometimes to get a sense of what normal breathing is, but once you know it, you can call it to mind. And then even the hormones of anger or whatever may be shouting in your ears, you don't have to believe them. You can still breathe in a normal way. And bit by bit by bit, that'll gradually bring everything else back to normalcy. As the Buddha said, there are two things that really fashion your state of mind. One is feelings, and the other is perceptions. Perceptions being the images you hold in mind, that be a word or a metal picture. The words here are just basic concepts before they even turn into sentences. And these are the things that shape our minds, shape our state of mind. Sometimes you find yourself in a good mood and you can trace it back and it's to a particular feeling in the body or a particular set of perceptions. And so you want to be able to look at your perceptions to see if anything unusual is coming in, especially anything abnormal, anything that's going to create problems. So you can know how to step out. This means one, having the place to step out, and two, having some alternative perceptions you can bring in mind. Because many of these perceptions, when they come, are very believable, because you're used to believing them. But if you look at them from a different angle, there is something totally other. They don't carry that same weight, same quality of being convincing. Years back when I was staying at the monastery in Thailand, someone left a, a book of science fiction stories. And there was one that I really liked. It was about a group of people that were going to do battle with an electronic, basically a huge electronic fence that had been set up around one part of the universe by these people who were extremely advanced. And then I found themselves trapped inside their, their fence, and so they've been sending messages to Earth first to show how really advanced they were, and then asking for help. Can you help get us out of this place? Now that we've improved your technology, improved your science, can you use it to get us out of this place? And so they took a rocket full of very advanced scientists, all the best ones they could find. And they found this old woman to be the janitor. And as they approached the, the electronic fence, they met, and the captain in charge of it took all the different proposals that all the best scientists had given and shredded them apart, showed how poorly reasoned they were and how impossible it was. And next thing they knew, the, all the electricity went out in the, in the rocket. And what had happened was that 
the crucial person on the team was not the scientist, it was that old woman who was a janitor. Apparently they had found her. She had been about to commit suicide. She decided she didn't believe in anything at all. The one, she, one thing she did believe in was science. And so they brought her along, and then she got to witness all the scientists' theories being torn apart, and she decided she didn't believe anything. So they put her in the pod that went through and went through the electronic fence and broke it. It was because she didn't believe in it that she was able to get past it. So you have to use that determination. You don't have to believe everything you think. And your power of not believing it, your power of skepticism. Something comes up in the mind and may seem really convincing, but if you realize this is having a bad impact on the mind, there must be something wrong with it. You have to have your doubts about it. Have your conviction in the breath, have your conviction in the Dharma. Make that as strong as, as you can, because that helps get you past all the perceptions in the mind that are going to pull you away from the practice or lead to all kinds of unfortunate mental states that could get you worse and worse and worse. So use the breath as your place to return to normalcy, your place to return to your senses when your perceptions are getting strange. <laughs>